I hope he joins up. We'll see. I know. I need another rival in the pigskin pickles. <laughs> I don't know what. It- Go ahead. I was going to say because I I realized you just became enamored enamored with my quarterback. Apparently, well, it was just one of those things. I was doing my Twitter stuff today, right? Um, after my day of ugh. Anyway, hey, we'll get there. We'll get there. And I just saw pe- like I, ju- I saw like four people retweet it in a row, and I went, ah, this is that guy from the Raiders. Todd mentioned him. I'll go drop it and let him have some fun. That everyone's starting to like rally around his i don't know what, what's this guy's deal i don't know he looks he looks like um he looks like a cartoon character he looks like the third outrunner and maybe somebody else will get it. well actually <laughs> actually uh, another friend of yours is the third outrunner he would be the fourth outrunner but anyway i don't know who the third but anyway well uh, if he, you think if you think real hard todd <laughs> i think because i'm talking about wrestling mm-hmm and if it's something I'm bringing up specific, I'm like I'm giving you the Mr. Thompson treatment, right? <laughs> right. Your friend made their national television debut this past Friday night. Oh, my friend. Okay. Yes. Who is the oh. third outrunner? So this guy's the fourth outrunner. I want to be the fifth outrunner, but uh, I mean I've never outrun anything, Joe. So, but this is Gardner Flint Minshew the second, Joe. Uh, who joined the league in, I believe it was 2019, and he's had, uh, I don't know, uh, three teams before this. So, But he was one of those that there was the whole thing with him where he was doing like good for a bit, and he, they were calling it Minshew Magic. And him, because I, I believe if I'm right, he was the one who was driving, like he's redneck you know, kind of deal. Like he was driving around in an RV kind of thing. He has that mustache that everybody just yeah. loves. He's like Uncle Rico come to life. You know what I mean? Well, um, I, but I got I, to I, deal with Uncle Rico come to life this past weekend, but. But I love him. I, 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 I'm I hoping and not not hoping, but obviously, as you pointed out in the discord, that uh, he's probably going to be MVP. Like you saw his form and function. This guy is the real deal, baby. So I'm glad you're on board. So, well, listen, I always support you. Um, we could talk about it. It's one of those things where, like, we could talk about you on after uh, on like at odds, and you'll never know. Mm-hmm. But I can't really talk about Adam on this show because eventually he will know. True, true. That's the hundred dollar tier, right? But he took me to task this past week. Because he looked at my picks from last year. Because I always say that I make my picks at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. And I go based by who my friends like. It's like, okay, right. well, you know, Todd likes the Raiders, so I'll pick the Raiders. This person, like, I know, like, X amount of people that like the Giants, so this. And X amount of people like, like the Eagles, so it's this. And this is the, the whatchamacallit, the, the Browns and whatever it is. And then Adam goes, you know, I looked at your picks last year. And right. I saw you rarely picked the Steelers. And I said, no, I go, it just so happened that more times than not, you know, it's if it was, you know, and I was making up a lie or whatever it was, Um, because the only two people I know that like the Steelers that are real people are Adam and Ed of uh, of Hayabusa Speed returning this past week, Spotify exclusive. Um, You know, a third. But anyway, he sells Dave Dave from the comic book shop. He sells you your comics. Happy birthday, by the way. It's his birthday today. I don't give birthday shout outs, but. When he hears this in two days. I don't know if he listens to the After Darks, but anyway, go ahead. He don't listen to these shows. Right. So, um, but no, it's just one of those things where more times than not, and again, I don't remember. Like, I did my picks at the beginning. I don't know who the fuck I picked, right? Mm-hmm. But I love that Adam went and looked at my picks to see if I was, like, lying or telling the truth about, right. like, my pick or whatever it is. Right. But so- I... Uh, and I said, I go, Steelers are going to trump all. I'm going to pick Steelers over, or Steelers, pff, Raiders over. Ugh, in support of Dewey Steelers, but go ahead. Right. Yeah, in support of you, I'm picking against my best interests. I'm picking the Raiders over everybody, right? Right, except for with Gardner Minshew this year, but go ahead. Right. But th- when it's, you know, a Steelers matchup, more times than not, if I have no horse in the race, and I'll pick the Steelers unless the Steelers are like, you know where they have the percentage? Mm-hmm. And it'll say like seven percent of the people pick the Steelers, and I'm like, well, I'll pick the other team, <laughs> right? 
I'm I'm glad that it's Raiders over all else. So literally, you're picking the Raiders 17 times in a season. Yeah, and then everybody else, you have to do your your goes intas. Right. So, but I will say one last thing on Gardner Minshew: you have to put all the money on him because in 2018 in college he won the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. Oh. And you know, John Unitas, there was a haircut you could set your watch to, Joe. <laughs> and uh, Garner Minshew. Gardner, that his name? Like, G- Guy Gardner, Gardner, yeah. Minshew, yes. Uh, you don't have no clever way for me to remember his last name? Um, I don't know. It's like like Blue Chew, but with Min. Minshew. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, but we started the real show, so I didn't get a chance to talk about some other stuff. Um, but because of young Ed today, I went and I looked at our, uh, download numbers, which I probably haven't looked at our download numbers in years. Right. I'm the guy who knows all the numbers on the show, but go ahead. Right. If you want to know trends, (laughs) if you want to know country spikes, Mm -hmm. if you want to know keyword analytics, the SEO stuff, ask Todd. Right. You're not going to respond. You're not going to get an answer. Mm -hmm. But ask him anyway. That's what I say. The only thing, the only numbers I don't know on this show are the ad rates. There you go. Now, this is not um, directly weather related. Mm -hmm. But we have the windows open today. Me too. And that's because, coming back around a little bit, football weather is starting to, to, you know, come around again, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like this. I like this kind of weather. Yeah, this is my kind of weather. Like we, uh, a- April and I went for a walk the other night because I've been trying to get out and move more. Um, today was not that day, unfortunately. <laughs> right. um, but we went out and it was like, was it Friday night? Yeah, it was Friday night. And it was like, be- like it was perfect weather. Like we left the house at like seven o'clock mm-hmm. and it was maybe like 62 degrees with like a little chill in the air. Right. Oh, no rain, that weather, that's perfect. Exactly. I 100% agree. This well, like, you know, trimmed machine of a body doesn't overheat (laughs) in that weather. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm trying to overheat. I'm trying to push it. I'm trying to whatever. But I don't know, man. Today was just not my day. Um, And again, it's, 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 it's a correlation of things. But I'll get into everything. What have you been up to? How's your weekend? What'd you do? I did nothing over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, all, up, up until today, though, I don't know when it happened. But and I don't know what I did. But I feel like somebody kicked me in my in my ribs on the left side. Mm. No one, you know, you know, I'm going to put out there. No one has kicked me in the ribs, but it feels like that so i'm hoping it's just a muscle or something and when i go to sleep tonight uh, i'll wake up and i'll feel better but uh i'm more i'm i'm doing this show through the pain through the pain joe no load management for me (laughs) so do you have any heating pads or anything i I do i do have heating pads and i usually use them when like when my back which my back hasn't really gone out in a long time like i get i don't know like the sciatic and stuff like that so i'm gonna knock on wood here you might hear it it hasn't gone out in a long time uh but i think a lot to do with it is i did lose a little bit of the chunkage there in the last year and a half oh okay and I moved my wallet slash money clip from the back pocket to the front pocket. So that will throw off your entire equilibrium for real. Yes, especially when you have the kind of cashish that I have. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, I, I I went out for my walk on Sunday as well, and I got caught in a downpour. I thought I had missed it. I thought it was like in between rainstorms. <laughs> right. And I was like on my 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 little trail that I do. I was like the furthest part away from my house that I could possibly be, mm-hmm. and it just started pouring. And I'm like, son of a bitch! I stood under a tree and I tried to wait it out a little bit, but it was like 15 minutes later. And I'm like, fuck! I got to get home. I got shit to do today, you know. Does someone smell wet, supposed to? <laughs> well, the only one that was home was my kid, and you don't give a shit, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um, but no, I just like today, like, I don't know what happened today. I just like, 
um, whatever motivation I had. Like, so I was done with work and I should have mowed the lawn today and I didn't. I just didn't have the motivation for it. I went and I like cleaned up the yard and did all that shit. Got everything ready for garbage night. Went and got gas for the ga- the lawn mower because I have a gas powered mower. I did the oil. I did all the other stuff. And then when it came time to actually mow the lawn, I'm like, I don't want to fucking do this right now. You're speaking my language. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Uh, But then I got the fire lit under my ass because, you know, I mentioned we got the new tub like two months ago. um, And it was draining slow. So because it's like a newfangled tub, like the the stopper for the water, Mm -hmm. it's not just, it's like you have to unscrew it. But you have to unscrew it in a certain way. So I'm fucking around with that. And I'm digging all the gunk out of the goddamn thing there. <laughs> and then it's like one of those things where, like, okay, now I got my second win. I got my motivation. The sink in the bathroom has been running slow. But the sink in the bathroom is getting, like, torn out here in, like, days. Because our new vanity is being delivered, like, tomorrow. Which means, like, in the next couple days, that's getting torn out and the new one's getting put in. All new piping and everything else like that. But I'm like, fuck it, I want to fix it now. And it was just one of those things where it was kissing right up to recording this, or I would have had that entire sink apart and just pulling all the shit out of there because I was just it was disgusting. It was so gross, right. but I got my motivation back. Good, that's one of us. Yeah. So, and then of course the fantastic trip to Rochester, uh, New York this past weekend. Sure. Uh, my car was not stolen from the parking lot of the comedy club. That's not saying someone else wasn't. And my car was not one of the nine other cars that were broken into at the parking lot of the comedy club. Is this a bit or is that true? (laughs) That is absolutely true. What happened? Nine cars were broken into over the course of the two days and one car was outright stolen. Mm. Wow. A lot of thieves at DabbleCon. (laughs) I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's worse. The Dabblers... Or the attention deficit criminals, man. Jesus I would say Christ. the attention deficit criminals. Okay. Um, I don't know. Sounds like there's a lot of crime going on at DabbleCon. It's it wasn't anyone. It's allegedly the element in and around Rochester, but the sure. area where the comedy club is sure. is really nice. Like we were asking around, and you know, April and I went. We met up with a friend of the show, Matt Fish. Um, we'll get into his concerns and issues. And we were like in between the two events on Saturday and we were looking for somewhere to eat. And we wanted to go and get like a real r- authentic Rochester garbage plate. Mm-hmm. And we opted not doing so, uh, not because of what we were told, but like literally all of the regular, like all of the locals that we asked. They're like, oh, you can go to this place, which is the originator <laughs> of the garbage plate, but it's in a real bad part of town. And I'm like... This is a very nice part of town, and nine cars were broken into. I don't know. You know what I mean? Do, How much more it's going to get? Do you have a description of the person who was breaking into cars? Yes, I believe he was a, a russet. No. How dare you? That's oh, my friend, oh, Cardiff, oh, which is very oh, strange to say. Oh, by the way, when I did my little joke in the Discord about uh, – young page or whatever her name is about the signs ripping them up. If you know, yes. and you went, I'm on my way to Cardiff right now yes. to sell signs. I thought you were fucking talking about your little potato buddy. So that's the joke. I, I was, that was the joke I was making online when they announced that they were going to be running at Cardiff stadium this mm-hmm. week. I, I added Cardiff himself. And I said, I didn't know you had your own stadium. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Is he going to DabbleCon again right now? I don't know what. No. I, oh, and then about like 18 hours later, I'm like, <laughs> oh, he's talking about the fucking Doctor Who Central over there in England. So Wales, yes. Right. Well, the Cardiff was where they were filming for the longest time. Oh, sure. Why not? Sure. Um, but we ended up going to like, a, I guess it's like a Rochester-ish, like upstate New York only-ish chain called uh, Dinosaur uh, Barbecue, which was really good. Mm-hmm. Right. I uh, got a burger with like tons of like bacon and meat and shit on it. And, you know, um, mm-hmm. but the shows were good. The comedy was fun. Um, you know, there was only technical difficulties literally at the end of the last bit that they were doing in the... <laughs> <laughs> club owner, like the the manager of the club, who's one of the people involved in all the shit, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, so he he had a meltdown, and like when we were there for the Saturday like afternoon show, he yeah. was like just he looked very focused, very <laughs> business, very whatever. And then when we came back, and it was like still a little bit of time before they opened up for the night show, I went over to him. I'm like, "Hey, how you doing, Vinny? What's going on?" I go, "You look a lot more calm right now." And he goes, "Did I see him on edge?" I go, "During the afternoon." I go, "It looked like." You, I don't want to say that you're on edge, but you looked like you were busy, and I didn't want to bother you. He goes, yeah, that was a good idea. I go, all right. <laughs> they had a little trouble at the end show because somebody stole all the equipment. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but it was fun. April had a good time, even though she um, you know, did not get like most of the insulary stuff. But because Poor these people. are people, whether it be working comedians or people that are just generally and naturally funny from doing podcasting stuff, um, you know, she enjoyed herself. Like, nothing went, like, too far that made her uncomfortable. And she's got, like, a kind of, like, hot barometer for that sort of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just trying to think what else from there. Um, but, yeah, I got Mark pictures with all the people I want to get Mark pictures with. Did you get any Mark pictures with people maybe you shouldn't have? So, um, <laughs> I'm going to tiptoe around this one because uh, <laughs> I could say it because I don't think they listen to this show. They only listen to the wrestling show, right? Mm-hmm. So I took a picture from afar of that person while they were on stage. Okay. And I sent it to who I told you I was going to send it to. Mm-hmm. And let me see what he said. He he said, first of all, he says he looks like your Nana. Oh, boy. Which he kind of sort of does. Uh, and then he just said, I hope you're having a good time. That's I'm, I hope you had a good time. Too. I did. I had a good time. Good, I had a couple good. drinks. I felt it the next day. Um, but yeah, that was, so that was it. That was DabbleCon. And then, oh, one last bit on DabbleCon. Mm-hmm. And the tweet is going to go out when Wings on Wings puts their tweet out. I know you're a big follower of social media and podcasts. But, but with things I have in my life 24-7. Right. So Wings on Wings comes out on Tuesday, and then they do their official tweet of the show. Um later in the week where they do the picture of the, the hot sauce, right? hmm And, like, what their rating was and a link to the show and everything else like that, right? hmm So the hot sauce that they did for this week's show was Carl from Who Are These Podcasts, like, one of the guys that DabbleCon is around. It's, like, his branded hot sauce, okay? Mm-hmm. So, because uh, I had sent them, the, I, I gifted them the Broski one last year when Broski had his own hot sauce. And then I gifted them the Carl one for this year. So the irony of a podcast that reviews the show Wings, but also reviews hot sauces, is reviewing the hot sauce of a podcast that reviews other podcasts. Oh my god, it's the snake eating its own tail. Exactly, exactly. So I have the whole tweet constructed for when Wings on Wings puts out the picture of the bottle. Um Mm -hmm. And they were attempting to, like, and they always say, like, the, you know, I don't need to tell you, Todd, but uh, I'm, I'm telling people who don't listen to Wings on Wings. They're start actually wrapping up. There's only, like, yep. five episodes of Wings left in their run, right? It's, it's sad. It's sad. You know, really good right. show. <laughs> so uh, they always go over, like, oh, what the hot sauce is, where it's from, you know, so on and so forth. And they tell the tale. Of that I'm the one that purchased it for them, and they were recording it the weekend that I was like they recorded it this past Friday. So they they kind of give the broad strokes of what all this is. Mm-hmm. And Doug says, Oh, that's that weird thing that Joe's into. Well, that's 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 certainly something coming from Doug. <laughs> and that's what I said. <laughs> Woo! Joe, I'd worry about yourself if you're hearing that from Doug. <laughs> I had to pause the podcast and I was like laughing for like five minutes. I'm like, oh my God. Right. And I will say this about Wings on Wings. They had two truly great episodes, Joe. <laughs> two great episodes. From beginning to end, I remember it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are the two that you were on because. What? I'm not saying that, maybe. All right. Because your guy was on what I don't even I don't mind me to try to think of some cute name because I have no idea what the fuck his name is I don't remember right right 
But it was Mr. Las Cruces. Oh, but, there you go. No. But I look forward to see what they do after this. I, I listen, I'm not gonna spoil it here, but I did get tipped off today of what their plan is after this. I, I would they gave me some like I when I saw DJ in the shop once, he was kind of like telling me what their ideas were. So I'm not one hundred percent sure. And I saw him today, I should have asked him. Mm-hmm. No, so well, I, then I got no problem saying this. <laughs> what they have planned for after wings mm-hmm. is a nice extended break. <laughs> a hiatus? <laughs> yeah, it's a hiatus. I still want to do uh, Sour Mash on Mash. <laughs> okay. You know, where we get drunk and review, uh, we do episodes of Mash. Even though there's like, what, 11 or 12 seasons? I'm going to be very, very drunk. <laughs> my, my check liver light will be on after a short time. <laughs> so. So, um, you know, obviously the, the dream, of course, is to do the... Um, to, uh, you said sour mash on mash, but to do the the mash episode by episode show with the rotating get cast mm-hmm. of you, Doug, Ultramantis Black, and Young Ed, who is strangely a mash fan as well. Well, every once in a while, Ed has good taste. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got, man. I'm happy. I got nothing. I've been living an underground life, like I said. I'm glad of the two of us. You're the one who's living life hard for the for the people on this podcast. No, and I'm 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 like I said. Outside of this, I'm done. You know, I got no. Well, uh, AEW is coming to the arena next month. You want to come? Oh yeah, I'm in. I know you got in, so you can get on a next- Wednesday night. You want to come for real? Uh- Wednesday night, I'm down. We'll go. Who's okay. going? That, I got to find out who's going first. Well, it's going to be me. It's going to be Adam. It's going to be Brett. It's going to be DJ. All right. Can I be a crowd comedian? No. Well, we'll see. We'll discuss off air. Because okay. I, I was going to bring my, I was going to do all the bits that are good. So <sighs> maybe I might only ask for four tickets. Mm. Well, I was going to get six. I want a seat for each cheek. So, oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, everyone. This was uh, episode 509 of Longbox Heroes After Dark, right? Yeah. Sure. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, we'll see you next week. Network, the Lamborghini (laughs) of Podcast Networks.